Yama, hello. Nagi, Catherine Trindle, President of the New South Wales Aboriginal Education Consultative Group. It is an absolute pleasure to be able to be speaking to you today around the topic of lifelong learning. The New South Wales AECG has been founded on the philosophy that our ways of living, our ways of knowing and our ways of teaching have always been there since the very time immemorial. For us, it's about connecting to country and using the environment as our classroom because it teaches us. We only have to listen to the birds. It will say their names. You listen and you call the wind and it will come. The environment teaches you the names of things that help us to live and sustain us as an environment and who we are. We have to look after it, and in my language, that's Gunima. And we have to look after Gunima, which is Mother Earth, for to help her heal country. Because what we need to do is every time we take something from Mother Earth or Gunima, we have to replace it. And that's called reciprocity. And for that to happen, we will have continuous existence to this beautiful, great big world that we live in. The New South Wales ACG are in a position to be able to take you on a journey, a localised journey and a contextualised journey. So wherever your school may be, wherever your office may be, underneath that land, underneath that, sorry, underneath those buildings was, is and always will be Aboriginal land. But do you know whose land that you are living on? Do you really know what a welcome to country means? It's up to us to work together to ensure longevity it happens and that by doing it together in partnership, we will learn from one another. We need to learn. We have a joint story. But our story is about using the environment as our classroom. It teaches us. It heals us. It protects us. It keeps us safe. It gives us every single thing that we need to survive. But if we continually destroy it, it will be no longer there for generations and generations to come. The power is with you. The power with, is with us. And that power isn't a magic power. It's about getting to know your country, walking country, sitting on country, engaging with country, learning country, and reaching out to the New South Wales Aboriginal Education Consultative Group because we'll be able to help you take that journey. So it's up to you. Education Week isn't just this week. It's every single day of our lives that we live and we continue to live and we are willing to take that journey of discovery. Not discovery, as you would think of it, but learning to know what's within your own reach and within your own environment that you can engage with. Language is so important. It identifies us. Our stories. Everyone knows about how the birds got their colours. But do you know that story? There's a thread right across Australia that has different stories that go with how the birds got their colours. Do you know about Garia? I'm go I'm, I think you might hear a story about that this week from Gomeroy country here in northwestern New South Wales. As the president of the New South Wales ACG, I want to say, Governor Linda, thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for taking the time to engage. Thank you for learning and listening and having the opportunity of asking questions, please ask those questions because you will find the answer if you're willing to take that journey. Governor Inda. Nagambi, Gamera Nai, Gamango Molly, Murano, Gamanda, Nalayang Eo, Daru Wulawala, Mara Muranong Yaga, Nale Majang Nai, Mara Murda Wuliwa. This is our country, Gamay, Botany Bay. Our people have been living here since time began. Our land, waterways, and sky are part of what we refer to is our country. Our spirit ancestors created our country and the various life forms within it, giving us our kinship, social structures and our laws. Gamay, Botany Bay provided 
Gumbandal, the people belonging to Botany Bay, the resources needed to thrive for many generations. Our responsibility to care for one another and our environment in a spiritual and sustainable way ensured our people not only survive but thrive. In this part of our country, you may hear and see different ways Aboriginal people identify themselves, like Gwiagul, Gadigal, Bidigal, Gamangal, Dharagal and Gadigal. These names describe different layers of identity. Some refer to family, to the region where they were born and lived, the language they spoke, their connection to their spirit ancestors, and their cultural status they held. Our old people taught us that your language and your country go together. They cannot be separated. Our language gives our people a spiritual connection to our country, including all life forms within it. We continue to use our language to assert our ongoing connections to our country. We still describe our country by using the original names, like Bunnaby, which means water source, and is the name for the northern headland of Gamay, or Gurubu, which is where the Lapuru's Aboriginal community was permanently placed 136 years ago, and means the place of the bush pigeon. We call the southern headland of Gamay, Gibia, and Gondor is the name of the place where the crew of the HM Bark Endeavour landed. Gondor was adapted by Europeans for Cornell, which is still used today. Other local names like Tabagai, Yara, and Tara are still used by both Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people around the bay. And on behalf of our people, we hope you enjoy your visit to Gamay. That's why I'm using this tree. See the Katharina? Yeah. Hey, Kumba. 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 Okay. Yep. What do you get? You say, Nyari. Who you say, Nyari, Nyari. Nyari. Look forward, okay? So load your spear up. Okay? Aim them all together, see what it aim them all at the same spot. Quick. 
What I'd like to do now is tell you a Darwell dreaming story that includes the whale, the starfish, the koala and a crane. So a long time ago the Darwell people lived in a place called Nurrigan and Nurrigan was going really bad. All the water was drying up and therefore all the plant life was dying and all the animals as well were starting to die off. So the Dural people had to find a better place to go and live. But to go somewhere else they needed transport. There was a giant Dural person named Buri Buri who had a massive big canoe. It was so big he could have put everybody in that vessel and took them to another place where they could find decent food and water. But he was very greedy. He didn't want to share that canoe. So two other smaller Dharawal people named Koala and Junagan, they decided to come together and scheme. Koala said to Junagan, why don't you put Buri Buri to sleep? And as he's sleeping, jump in the canoe with everybody aboard and we'll row to another place. So Jurigan did that, he tricked Buri Buri into laying down and he put him to sleep. He had two big sticks next to him, Jurigan. Every time Buri Buri would ask him you know, whether his canoe was okay, he would tap the two sticks together and say, yeah, can you hear it? They're still here. However, Buri Buri woke up, he looked at the sea, he saw his canoe being rowed away by Koala and everybody else on board. So him and Junagan had a skirmish, they had a fight on the rocks. And as I was fighting, Junagan stabbed him in the top of the head with one of those sticks. But Buri Buri was so big, he just picked him up and he splattered him on the rocks. And he took a shape like that. And then Junigan rolled off the rocks and as he drifted down to the bottom, he turned into a starfish. Buri Buri jumped in the water and for days on end he chased the canoe. Koala rode faster and faster. And as he did so, he grew big arms. He tended to take a different shape as well, so he grew big ears, fur all over himself, and a strange nose. So that chase went on for days on end, and as it was happening, Buri Buri started to take shape as well, so he turned into something that is quite large in the ocean. So he grew a big tail and big fins on the side, that hole in his head, blood was coming out, but then soon turned to clean water. So he was turned into a whale. There was a, a well-known dancer on the vessel as well, Galu. And when Galu seen land coming up, he was so excited he started dancing quite ferociously. But he danced so strong and so hard his foot went straight through the canoe and punched a hole in it. So they managed to get the canoe onto land and when they did so they rolled it upside down. So Buri Buri couldn't recognise it anymore. Koala was so tired he just ran up into a tree and he fell asleep. And he sleeps in the treetops all day now. Galu turned into a beautiful big crane. And in Darwell country we have this crane that dances. So that's why we call starfish Junagan, whales Buri Buri, koalas Kuala, and cranes Galu. To this very day, 
every year. Buri Buri goes up and down the coastline, spurting up water, looking for his canoe. But he can't find it because they rolled it upside down, it's not recognisable anymore. So these animals that we see now, the whale, the starfish, koala and crane are now our spirit ancestors because of that story. So we have very special relationships with those particular animals, particularly the whale. And that's why the Dharawal people identify as whale people. Just as other Aboriginal people might identify as snake people or turtle people or crow people and so on. So all those strong connections come from our dreaming and our dreaming stories. Yama, Yamanda, Gomoroi. Wallaby Yagani Yani, Unongala Maramala Naleda. Dilia Yamuli, Gather no Marzu's Gango Gumpre, Namang in the Wella Lalawa, Wella Lalawa. Yamangu, Nay Jan Kitchen Waters, Nay Gomore and Yampa Mari, Walla Bang A Zawun Temu, Galala Ding A Yanani, Bagay Bidding Yam and Nay Walla. Hey everyone, my name is Jaden Kitchener Waters and I'm a proud Gomorrah and Yempa man from here in Tamworth. I'm the current Gomorrah Project Officer based in Tamworth. Today I'm going to share some of my lifelong learnings from my classroom, Gomorrah country. Ngaraba gunima di garia yanani. Yela garia yanani wolai baga. Garia yanawana wolai baga. Nyani nga milden garia wolai baga bagaiga galiga. Guna Galaga Ngamala Winangala Ngaria Balungi Ngamanga Gi Babu Giru Diri Diri Bamba Ilangi Giru Diri Diri Bamba Ilangi Balungi Ngamanga Gi Babu Lamalunga Mingyanga Li Maridu Ilangi Ayamanga Ayamago Ilangi Ayamanga In the Walaiba, in the beginning, Ngaria, the rainbow circle, first come up out of our mum and travel across this country, carving the land, teaching us law, teaching us story, teaching us how to live. We see evidence of him moving across this country everywhere, through the water, through the sky, through our mum forever flowing and teaching. He kept travelling until he died. But when he woke again and he travelled along that water, he still continues to travel. We see him all the time. Because the water continues to flow. The wind continues to blow. The, the birds begin to sing. This is our law. This is our culture. This is who we are. This is our story. This is your story. Our story is forever. And the more that we continue to share it and love it, the more that we continue to heal our country, to heal our mum, and to heal our people. Together, we are strong. We follow the path that he has laid, we follow the path our old people have laid for us and will continue to be forever, just like them. <laughs> Balungi,